We are in need of not just forgiving grace and adopting grace and reconciling grace. We are in deep need of transforming grace. One of the things I love about the Psalms is if you read through the Psalms looking for God's grace, you will discover every aspect, every function of the grace of God. They're all there in the Psalms. It's, it's really quite amazing. And Psalms 80 focuses, focuses on the grace of restoration. One of the most provocative word pictures that God uses to describe his grace is the word restoration. We once lived across the street from a beautiful old house that was being restored. And I loved watching that process. It kept me fascinated for months. This once grand house was broken down and needing of care. And as I, I watched this process for months, I realized that there is a huge difference between a house that is being remodeled and a house that is being restored. Uh, when you remodel a house, you throw up cheap paneling over cracked walls. You try to do a quick fix to wiring and plumbing. Your goal is to make the house livable. That's not res what restoration. A restorer will peel the house back to its deepest level of difficulty and build out until it's back to the condition it was in when it was first built. We watched a house that was jacked up and then a new foundation was put underneath. It was crazy to watch because that foundation needed to be restored. God is not interested in remodeling you. His goal is not to make you livable. His goal is to restore you to the condition he designed for you to be in when he created people uh, and placed them in this place we call earth. Psalm 80 is a cry for God's restorative grace. And there is a refrain in verse 3, verse 7, and verse 19. Restore, O God, let your face shine that we may be saved. Restore us, O God of hosts, let your face shine that we may be saved. Restore us, O God of hosts, let your face shine that we may be saved. The sad fact is sin leaves us not just needing forgiveness because sin leaves us damaged. And, and there's a way in which that damage reaches to every part of our being. And so we are in need of not just forgiving grace and adopting grace and reconciling grace and justifying grace. We are in deep need of transforming grace. When our lives are broken by sin, it's wonderful that God doesn't just act in righteous condemnation. It's a wonderful thing that he doesn't settle for remodeling. No, God restores us. Now, you know whether a house is going to be restored or condemned by the size of tools that are out front. If there's a wrecking ball out front, they aren't restoring this baby, they're tearing it down. Isn't it wonderful that God never uses wrecking balls of condemn condemnation against his children, but the fine tools of restoration? That's such a beautiful picture of his grace. Even when you don't care that you're broken down, even if you're willing to you're willing to live in your messed up condition the good news is the divine restorer has entered the house and he cares 
and he's going to walk from room to room until the house that is you has been totally renewed again and will live for all of eternity in the glory of that perfect restoration. Thank you.